So for, for the purposes of today's conversation, it means most of those Palestinians who crashed through the gates of Gaza, it was their first time ever leaving Gaza. They were in their 20s. They had never seen anything except via the web. They had never seen anything of the outside world. They had been confined to this space for 20 years. That's not hyperbole. That's not exaggeration. About half of Gaza, half the population, for the past 20 years has been unemployed. That figure or that percentage rises to 60% um, when you look at the youth. So now your audience should ponder, here is a population where a large part has been left for 20 years to just pace back and forth in an area that's among the densest, most densely populated in the world with nothing whatsoever else to look forward to. That's a fact. You get up each morning, there's no work, there's nowhere to go. You can't even try to look emigrating. See what happens. Come to the United States. Come to France. No. Can't leave. That's why David Cameron, the former British conservative prime minister, he described Gaza as an open-air prison. Baruch Kimberly, a respected Israeli sociologist at the Hebrew University, he described Gaza as the world's largest concentration camp, the largest concentration camp ever. The most of the water in Gaza is undrinkable, non-potable. Uh, a half of Gaza uh, is by international humanitarian agencies. It's labeled severely strong and secure. Now, collect all these facts with one other fact. Every listener should remember as Israel is now proceeding to annihilate, by their own admission, to annihilate all human life in the north, all breathing life in the northern sector of Gaza, that half of Gaza, half, comprises children. One half of Gaza are children. If you can imagine the accumulated rage, the accumulated anger at being trapped, being born into the largest concentration camp ever, and then after 20 years, they have that moment where they can exact revenge on October 27th. Excuse me, October 7th. But that's still not the full picture. In fact, as ghastly as that picture is, it doesn't even begin to touch the surface of the reality because periodically 
Israel launches these high-tech massacres on Gaza, and in the course of which they kill very large numbers of civilians in Operation Cast Lead from December 26, 2008 to January 17, 2009. They killed about 1,400 Palestinians, 350 of them children, and demolished, leveled, flattened 6,000 homes. Uh, then that was called Operation Cast Lead. I'll skip a large number of other operations because time doesn't allow it. I will only say that try as I may, I can never remember the names of even half those murderous, high-tech destructions visited on Gaza. What Amnesty International called, it's not my title, bear in mind, after Operation Cast Lead, they issued a mammoth report titled 22 Days of Death and destruction. In 2014, July, August 2014, Israel initiated Operation Protective Edge. In the course of Protective Edge, it killed about 550 Palestinian children. It demolished 18,000 homes. The head of the International Committee of the Red Cross, Peter Maurer, is his name, M-A-U-R-E-R, for those of you listeners who wanted to check my what I'm saying now. It's the ICRC, International Committee of the Red Cross, Peter Maurer. He went to Gaza after Operation Protective Edge, as the Israelis called it, and he said, quote, in all of my life, I have never witnessed destruction on the scale that I've now observed in Gaza. Now, 